Hi everyone, welcome to Splunk Guru. So if you remember in our previous video, we discussed about one of the important concepts in Splunk that is DV Connect. So I have walked you through on the DB Connect concept, how to configure it, what's the benefits of uh, configuring Splunk DV Connect and like the real time uses in real time environment right how to uh, utilize the db connect so now like with the upgrades there are not many changes in the splunk db connect as i explained in the previous video so today what we are going to do we are going to see the installation and configuration of splunk db connector and then we'll see how to integrate it with the database so let's begin so for that i have this splunk instance and i'm going to configure the splunk db connect on this uh, splunk instance so for now i mean the process i mean if you follow me step by step it will be easier for you to understand uh, the installation and configuration steps because there are a lot many things involved in installing and configuring the splunk db connect so just uh, follow along and you should be able to configure it without any issues fine so what we will do if you click on apps also it's the fresh installation no apps add-ons installed on this instance as of now and if you click on manage apps we will try to install uh, splunk db connect here so again you get two options to install the app or add-on either way like you can download it directly from the splunkbase.com and then you can import that file here or you can just uh, click on this browse more app so it will take you to this plug base only and you will be able to search uh, the relevant app and then uh, eventually you can install it right so what we will do will look out for plug db connect so this is the app that we are looking out for we are going to install it now so let's click on install provide your username password so after providing your credentials here uh, the app will be installed and uh, okay so the app has been installed now uh, and it's asking to restart this plunk right so let's restart that and then move forward okay so now uh, this plunk has been restarted after installing this splunk db connect app let's log in back So now you are able to see this Splunk DB Connect app, right? It has been installed. And if you click on it, if you go to that app, you won't see any configurations as of now, right? Because we, it's just the fresh installation of this app. We haven't configured anything. And it, it there are prerequisites to be fulfilled before you can actually configure this app and integrate with the databases, right? So if you click on Setup. So it says currently unavailable. Please check your settings. The task server, right? So basically, it's looking out for the JR installation path, Java Home, basically. So that's the prerequisite for this app uh, to work. So if we go to the back end of this instance, and if you look out for Java, I think it's not installed currently, right? So let's try to install that. So let's try to install Java first and then we'll uh, go back to Splunk DB Connect app and then we'll try to set it up. Okay, so Java is being installed. Once that's done, uh, check for the Java version now. So now the Java version has been installed. And it's the latest one, right? So let's restart your Splunk once. Okay, so this Splunk has been restarted. Go back to Splunk web. Fine. Now, 
if you click on settings right it's still not able to detect this java home path but you are you no longer see that error at least right so now what we will do we'll configure this java home path and then it should auto pick here or what you can do you can define that jar installation path here as well directly so both ways right so you can either direct set this java home path on the instance or you can define that path here as well so let's try to find out the java installation path first so java has been installed that we already checked or let's try to find out where where is it installed on this instance right so the path is user win java so what we can do we can set the java home path here or you can directly provide this user like this path there on the splunk web so what we will do we'll define this path here for java home user so i think that should be enough let's try to find out if it's set now perfect so it's set now let's go back to Splunk web. Try to rephrase. It's still not able to pick, right? So you try to restart your Splunk once. So after restarting, go back and check that. Uh, hopefully, Splunk should be able to detect the Java installation path, uh, JRE installation path, and then we will move forward. Perfect. So Splunk has been restarted. Let's go back to Splunk web. Login back and check. Fine. So now you can see right after restart of the Splunk, it's able to detect the EJR installation path, right? Basically the Java home variable that we had set up using an export command. Right? So now it's able to detect it. Now what next? So this is one of the prerequisites that's completed now. Now the second one is you need to configure the drivers, JDBC drivers. So if you remember in our previous video, we discussed about the JDBC driver. Why do we need it? So let's configure the driver. And in our case, I mean, there are obviously a lot many uh, databases it supports. So based on your requirement, you need to configure the relevant JDBC driver. So earlier, the configurations were different. You had to configure the, you had to download the drivers and then you had to put it inside. Uh, let me just show you. So if you go to this add-on path now, ATC apps, and if you go to this Splunk app DB connector, so. So here, if you see, that there is a folder called drivers, right? So earlier we had to download the relevant drivers and had to put that file here, but it's it's no longer required. Like obviously this option is still open, but now the process has been more smooth now. So what you can do instead, if you go to front end, so in our case, let's pick the database MySQL. We'll try to configure the drive, JDBC driver for MySQL and Aurora. So it's same driver that's going to work out for both MySQL Aurora database. So if you currently see, it's not installed, right? And if you go to Splunk's official uh, documents, and if you click on this configure Splunk DB connect, so it, you see this option drivers, right? So let's click on install database drivers. And it takes you to the distinct database JDBC drivers available for the different uh, relational databases. So in our case, we are going to test it out on the MySQL database as of now. So let's click MySQL. And what it does now, so there have been add-ons now. So you are no longer required to download the driver and then put it inside drivers directly in the app. What you can instead do, you can install this associated add-on to fulfill that uh, requirement. So let's go back to your Splunk app. Try to install that add-on and that should be enough uh, for the uh, JDBC driver requirement. 
So let's click on more apps. Look out for this add-on and then install it. So let's plug dbx add-on for MySQL JDBC, right? So let's install it. So once this add-on gets installed, you will see this option as installed, it should show as installed now. So let's look out for MySQL. So it, it still says it's not installed. So what we will do, we'll try to restart Splunk once. Okay, so once this restart completes, uh, it should be able to detect that add-on and then that JDB BC driver installation, it will show as completed. It will show as yes. So it's installed, let's log in. So JRE is set. If you click on drivers and if you look out for MySQL, you can see it is installed now, right? Along with the version and source. So now this JDBC driver requirement has also been fulfilled for the MySQL database. Our JRE path has been set up. So both the prerequisites have been completed now. Now you can move forward and start connecting with your uh, relational databases like MySQL database or Aurora. So I'll show you that in the next video, uh, like how to connect with the database now. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.